background uh, to apartheid that a number of people have been excluded um, from particular positions, uh, from particular professions and so on. We needed to implement this policy of recognition of prior learning. SACWA developed a policy on recognition of prior learning, RPL, in 2002. Although it worked well in the beginning, it soon ran into difficulties. People found it complex and inconsistent, and so a new policy was established and launched at a SACWA conference in 2014. RPL now needed to go to scale. So in other words, it shouldn't just affect a few um, places, but it should affect the whole country. And so the slogan of the conference was moving from a few islands of good practice to taking RPL to scale throughout the length and breadth of South Africa. The big question asked is, who would be the beneficiaries of this RPL policy? A lot of the RPL uh, initially was geared towards those people who have got experience that they've developed over many, many years, but was never allowed to get the qualification. Initially, this included many artisans such as electricians and plumbers who for many years had been doing the work but had never received the official qualification. So now you can look at the, the person's experience and skills, uh, do the assessment, the person is able to show that he or she can do the work, then that person gets a certificate that now can show I am a plumber, I am an electrician. There are also other cases where, for example, people have completed their national senior certificates but their results were not good enough for higher learning and training. Vui Sego Baliso is a third-year Bachelor of Education student who for many years worked as a cleaner because her national senior certificate results could not allow her to further her studies. My metric results were not so good and then because of financial problems at home, I couldn't go further to school. I had to work for a living. In other cases, people have even left school before completing their national senior certificates. Natalie Delport, Managing Director of E-Academy, is one such example. By the age of 16, I fell pregnant, and 17, I left school and I never matriculated. So uh, the only jobs I could ever get in life was a cashier, an assistant, an administrator, but I never really got the kind of jobs that I wanted. What recognition of prior learning then allows is to focus on the people's experience, focus on the skills and knowledge that they have gained through different kinds of ways. And now what happens is that they would be assessed to see whether through the experience they have built up enough experience, enough skills in order to get access to a formal qualification. I had to literally put an assignment together, portfolio of evidence, of my life from the day I started working to date. In every single position where I portrayed leadership skills, where I was, was put into positions of management and leadership, and I had to say what were the lessons learned, what could I have done better? What did I do great? And literally it felt like I was plotting my life on paper, you know, like I was writing my story. The policy um, that uh, SACWA has published and that is operative um, says that people can come in at different levels. Where, for example, somebody has done something that is uniquely um, profound and that brings in new knowledge and so by looking at the person's skills and experience, the person may, for example, go in, not necessarily um, at a degree level, a first degree level, but the person may go in at a higher level, at the honors level, at a uh, master's level. After leaving school with a national senior certificate, Peter worked for many years in several non-governmental organizations as a facilitator. Because of this experience, he managed to enroll for an honours degree without a junior degree, thanks to RPL. Everything I had learned about training, about human development, about community involvement, community activism, about making drama or creating drama or, or, or acting and performance was starting to come together. I got to find out that everything I knew 
I can be recognized for and that can help me go into a, an, a, an institution of learning, go into VITS. In some cases, RPL can assist people who do not have the required qualification for a certain position in the workspace. Somebody has worked in management for many, many years. There is a job that is now opening up and in order for the person to do the job, the person needs to have a certain qualification. Let's say the person needs an NPF Level 6 qualification or the person needs a diploma and so on. Um, the person can then go to an institution and um, they can be taken through a recognition of prior learning process where the person demonstrates that he or she has got the knowledge and understanding and so on and that they're able to do that specific job. Sibongile has a diploma in education from Zimbabwe but could not find a suitable job because she did not have the right qualifications. She also could not be accepted for an honours degree because she didn't have a junior degree. When I came to South Africa, I heard about Drama for Life, an educational program that focuses on um, applied theatre. And they were looking for people like me, people with a teaching background, so I applied. I was told that I needed to go to SAKWA. With all my certificates from high school up to the diploma certificates, I did that. And then I went back to Wits University, a Drama for Life, for the interviews. And they said, fine, they see the verification and I'm at level four, but I can't move straight away to my honours degree. And then fortunate enough, they made us write essays as entry level also. The essay was about the kind of work that I had done in Zimbabwe in relation to what Drama for Life needed. And that was, as a teacher, through drama, how can different communities be helped to develop? And they were so impressed with my essay and Drama for Life had conversations that I could eventually start with my honours degree. There are, however, many hurdles preventing the effective implementation of RPL policies. One of the barriers is that it is not generally known um, where people can go um, to have their um, prior learning recognised. Betty, who now has Bachelor of Laws or LLB degree, left school without a National Senior Certificate in 1987. She thought she'd be destined to a life of low-paying jobs. I sort of heard by chance about RPL. You know, one of our people in our church, um, Duncan, is a teacher. He just by chance said, you know, there's this RPL program that mature people can go and study and stuff. They don't need matric for that. And when he said that, I said to myself, that is, that is it for me. Another hurdle is that the institutions that are supposed to implement RPL lack knowledge and consistency. And also, um, there are not people that's necessarily trained to be able to listen to, uh, uh, to people and really make a distinction between what is indeed prior learning and what is not. After passing her National Senior Certificate, Ritabile tried to enroll at institutions of higher learning, but was unsuccessful. It was only several years later that she applied for RPL at the University of the Western Cape. The first meeting I always use in order to allow the, the candidate or the student to, to share their story. And what I'm looking for there are what I would call the absolutely key generative themes as well as some of the interesting pieces that, as it were, disturb these narratives. Um, because often that's where the key knowledge, learning, understandings are being developed. So it's really a, a conversation to start. We, we refer to it as a learning conversation, but obviously I'm listening with particular lenses uh, as to what kind of knowledge, what kind of skills, um, what kind of capabilities are being evidenced here or being suggested here um, in terms of uh, possibilities for studying at university. I think I was lucky in a way that they saw who I was and worked with that instead of, of changing who I am and creating their vision of what I'm supposed to be. Another barrier that exists is very often people who have gone through recognition of prior learning processes are sometimes being looked down on because they haven't sat in a formal classroom and they haven't gone through the traditional route.
With her diploma in education, Sbongile found herself in a postgraduate class where all the other learners had completed an undergraduate degree. I could say there was no difference between me and the other students who had done their undergraduate de degrees. But somehow it was frustrating. Maybe I was judging myself that I'm not coming from that background and other students are coming from an undergraduate background. But it was awesome because we engaged at the same level with other students. And I also think that um, in general there isn't an understanding and an appreciation that you can learn in different kinds of ways. You don't have to just sit in a classroom to learn. You can learn in a variety of ways. And we hope, in fact, by setting up a national system that it will become more and more acceptable and it will become more and more accessible and available, you know, to ordinary learners in South Africa.